Hello and welcome. I am George Schlackek, the one and only, and a crazy cyclist. Usually, I go on an overnight cycling trip about once a season. While those excursions are not really the kind of tours I usually dream of, they still mean a change of pace that is often needed when you don't have the opportunity to go on an extended bike tour. This year my spring was quite busy with work, so I was really looking forward to a big ride. In the summer it is possible to ride far away from home, even here in Alberta, without hauling a lot of clothes and stuff. An overnight with no luggage is easy, which makes it possible to take the road bike, which is geared fast and can do more kilometers in a single day. Last year I took this to a kind of extreme by riding 500 kilometers in only two days with a late 1970s entry-level road bike. I called it Old Fart Challenge 2020 and made two videos out of it. This year I have a new road bike. It is a higher quality bike I built myself out of parts I was able to gather. It is definitely a 1980s bike, but built in 2020. Old Fart Challenge 2021? Nah, I'm not really such an old fart, you know. <laughs> this year I was going to ride 550 kilometers or so. The destination was going to be Coronation, Alberta, a little town in southeastern Alberta I have never been to. No reason for that other than riding in a different part of our province. See, in late June and early July, we have daylight past 10 p.m. here in Alberta, so if a ride takes 16 hours or more, it can still be completed before it gets dark. Then late last week, the news hit about an approaching heat wave. They called it record-breaking even then. Daytime highs would reach close to 40 degrees for almost the entire week, which is truly unheard of for Alberta. Usually, I do well in hot temperatures. Barbara and I have toured in Colombia and we had temperatures in that range. The difference was that we never exceeded 70 kilometers per day. Tuesday morning came and the forecast was calling for super hot. Okay, this is June the 29th of 2021. Today is the day of the biggest heat wave that we've probably ever had. The forecast temperature is something like 38 degrees. That is very rare here. Actually, I don't remember that ever happening. And this also happens to be the day that I have set aside for starting my big bicycle tour. <laughs> what was I to do? Well, why not go on the bike ride as planned and then see where it takes me? Worst case scenario, I'd have to sleep under the stars somewhere. But most likely, every hick town in Alberta has an old motel that is usually affordable. Sounds like an adventure? Yeah, I thought so. The first 30 or so kilometers were very pleasant. I was energized by the nice weather. Alright, I'm about 20 kilometers into the ride. It is 8 o'clock. And according to this, I don't know if you can see it. It's 24 degrees right here. Sherwood Park. That is not bad. That's usually my uh, sweet spot kind of temperature for riding the bike. It felt like a perfect summer afternoon in the wee hours of the morning. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. The thought of temperatures rising by another 15 degrees or so within just a few hours was daunting. Was I completely out of my mind to pick this day for my big ride? There were extreme temperature warnings on my weather app. Avoid strenuous activity. If you have to exercise in the heat, put on sunscreen, drink lots of water, and so on. What was I trying to prove? Took Highway 14 south 
east of Edmonton. Uh, I just started this. Uh, see, there's a sign here. Tells me how far everything is. There's a cooking lake on my way. I figured I better take the opportunity and get a cold drink. And uh, I also filled up my water bottle, so double whammy. But you know, when I'm out there on the road, there's a breeze cooling me off. Right now I'm just sitting in the sun and I, I can already feel the heat. South Cooking Lake. Oh, gotta get back on the highway. The ride was actually quite pleasant up to Tofield, just off Highway 14. I had to fight a brisk headwind that kept me relatively cool as long as I kept the speed of about 25 kilometers an hour. This is demanding, but the terrain was mostly flat. So it is now 1026, still early in the day. Temperature 28 degrees. But it means that the next uh, few hours it's gonna increase by like possibly another 10 degrees. <laughs> I don't know how far I get in this weather. Uh, so in Tofield, I uh, take a break, look at my Google map, and then uh, I'm gonna come up with some kind of strategy here you know some kind of idea where I'm actually gonna go because right now yeah I have no clue I'm just <laughs> I'm just out for a bike ride understand anyways uh, my bike in case you care to know this weighs just under 30 pounds without the bags without the water so I don't know how much it weighs like that but the one thing that is a bit of a concern is the rims they are not clincher rims and these tires are getting warm but so far so good all right i'm in tofield alberta had a good ride here it's exactly 70 kilometers to get here so i still haven't got a plan i ate both my sandwiches now i have dessert here an orange but i'm gonna keep going that way which is east so until I hit a town by the name of Viking, I don't know, this might be a really small little hick town because before this trip I never even heard of it. But yeah, this is how you get to know your province, right? You go on a bike ride. I just have to make sure that I end up tonight in a town that has more than one little motel and even if it's just one, I'll probably be a room. I got another orange to eat and then I got to find some more Gatorade and uh, fill up my water ball and I'm good to go, I think. More sunscreen. Yeah, it's hot, but it's better than freezing your butt off. Then there was this old grain elevator, the kind that used to be all over the prairies. This was the perfect opportunity for me to get some aerial footage. I got out my drone and flew it close to the elevator. It was hard to see the screen on my phone because of the intense sunshine. With the steady flow of wind now gone, even just for a few minutes, I really started feeling the heat. Even the drones seem to be acting up. The DJI app has some pre-programmed shots, quick shots, for getting great footage of objects like buildings. But for some reason I couldn't get it to work. 
Finally, I just steered the drone manually while recording. It worked reasonably well. The next town was Riley, a place I had never heard of. This is Riley, Riley, Alberta. <laughs> I had never heard of it before. By the time I got there, I was no longer enjoying the headwind. It was becoming more and more demanding to maintain a good speed. I was sweating buckets. After enjoying yet another Gatorade, it seemed like a great idea to turn back around. Why fight the wind if it could help me? Yeah, I actually found some shade here, which is kind of good right now. See what is the weird thing at the moment? Looking at the flag there across from me. See the way the wind is blowing? I mean, I, I've been fighting the wind up to here. And uh, I'm almost so tempted to just go back home. I still get home, I uh, have 180 kilometers. If I went the same way, I can easily add on another loop or something like that and make it a 200k. And then uh, I'd be quite happy with that. But I haven't decided what to do yet. I have to look on the phone and see how far everything is. Yeah, this is an adventure for sure. So, let's see where it leads. Yes, it was a lazy way out, but I had nothing to prove in this heat that had now reached 37 degrees, which is almost 100 Fahrenheit. I could still make a loop on the way home and my total kilometers would be well over 200 for the day. Then I could sleep in my own bed, free of charge, and go for another ride the next day. I was going to ride back to Toefield and then go north for a bit, to reach the town of Lamont, from where I could use Highway 15 to get back to Edmonton. Getting to Toefield was pretty easy and really fast. Then the problem started happening. Yeah, I uh, ran into a problem. I'm back in Toefield and I went over some train tracks coming into town and I heard a loud noise like ping and now I got a spoke that let go. So I have to try and wobble my way back to Edmonton with no front brake. And I'm not sure if the wheel will actually make it that far. You always have time for Tim Hortons, especially when there is one. At first it seemed like my wheel was wobbling too much to even ride it. The spoke had broken next to the hub, not the nipple. Kind of telling me that the spokes were too loose. Wheels don't get any stronger with broken spokes, so I was really concerned about making it home. Especially since the roads in Alberta aren't particularly smooth. The solution was to unhook the front brake and cycle at a very leisurely pace, watching the road carefully to avoid as many bumps as possible. I got the hang of it after a while. Since the speedometer didn't work anymore, I have no idea how fast I was going, but it couldn't have been that bad. The heat really started messing with me after a while, but thanks to the tailwind and my slower pace, it was all good. What else am I gonna do? Walk all the way home? Just another stop. This really works. 
Every kilometer felt like an accomplishment and I happily wobbled my way back toward home. I can only go really, really slow because my wheel is wobbly. The horse by me. Hot cold after hot cold and I even There are too many cars here for a broken wheel. I was ready to celebrate when I reached Highway 21, the one close to Sherwood Park. But then I hit a major bump. My first concern was more damage to the front wheel. But there was another surprise. My rear tire felt really soft. I had pumped it up to 70 pounds that morning. Was there a slow leak? Sure enough, the tire had lost a lot of air. This was the first time I tried the small tire pump that came with my kit, hoping that just reinflating the tire would be sufficient to get me home. <laughs> when does that ever work? Wishful thinking, right? <laughs> Stay with me. I can ride, yay! The next few kilometers were gonna be crucial. To my surprise, I made it into Sherwood Park. Look at I'm on the riding the bicycle way. Rinka dinka do. The first thing on my mind was water. I was basically out of water and really thirsty. McDonald's usually has a summer drink special. I had to get my hands on one of those ice cold bubbly drinks. If I find a McDonald's, I want some of those garbage drinks there with lots of corn syrup and uh, black dye and what else they put in there some mild acid and uh, caffeine and carbon dioxide so it makes bubbles and ice crazy shit but yeah getting through Sherwood Park with the road bike is always a bit of an ordeal there are pretty good bicycle paths, but the way they were designed and built is pretty stupid. At every intersection, one has to swerve onto or around traffic islands. And the transition is not smooth. I was once again worried about having to push the bike for the last 10 kilometers or more. There were some sketchy moments when I rolled over the roughest parts. Was my wheel wobbling worse now, or was it still the same? Perhaps another spoke had failed? <laughs> Didn't I hear something like that? And that rear tire. Was it time to pump it up again, or just keep going while I still could? Before I knew it, I was on the home stretch through the eastern parts of Edmonton. Ah, despite nothing going as planned, and there not being a, a very detailed plan in the first place, this was an aw awesome. Oh. If the wheels can take that, then uh, maybe they're not that bad. Anyways, everything considered. This was an awesome bike ride <laughs> in the heat. So yeah. While this ride really didn't turn out the way I had hoped, I made it all the way home on my own power. This always feels great. And this time was no exception. <laughs> so it's mission accomplished. I'm home after all this big ordeal. Broken spoke, wobbly wheel, flat tire in the back, you name it, nothing, nothing could stop me, I'm here. Well, I was kind of lucky too, you know, that didn't get worse, nothing broke. Wobbled my way all the way back to the house and uh, I think now I'm gonna need a little bit of a break. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna go anywhere tomorrow. I need to inspect my 
my tire in the back and then I need to put a new spoke on the front wheel and through the wheel again and uh, I don't even think I'm gonna touch that tomorrow <laughs> yeah I need a bit of a rest and if you well of course you enjoyed this video watching me suffer <laughs> anyways you can subscribe or uh, you know whatever you want to do click the like button it's all good <laughs>